Hello everyone and welcome to the round table of the third European Naturopathic Congress. We just had a great day on today, Saturday 24th of July, hearing um, presentations from 10 countries in Europe, from uh, also presented by the WNF president of the World Naturopathic Federation, Dr. Ivan Lloyd from Canada. So thank you for that. Um, we had a great exchange of um, the naturopathic profession and our outlook in Europe. So the profession in Europe um, is, has a long history, we all know that, and we have around 60,000 naturopathic practitioners in Europe, and it is practiced in around 30 countries, so it is a strong region. We can also count with 12 WNF full member associations and with nine educational um, institutions. So today we would like to close this um, Congress with a round table discussion on um, topics that are um, really brand and important for the European region on educational standards and professional formation also on the um, advances in the European region and uh, the WNF support. And uh, so I would like to um, start with a, a quick presentation of everyone that is here at the round table. So we have Mariana Pontini and Silvia Polesello from Istituto Nemi Italy. Um, hello, welcome. Hi, and we have Eric, Erika Prachnik, the uh, president of the Slovenian Naturopathic Association and also the chair of the European region. And uh, we have Friede Aas from Norwegian Naturopathic Association. And uh, we have Marianne Mulligan here from Ireland's Fenoid and Iva Lloyd from Canada. Myself, uh, I'm Tina Hauser, representing OCN Finaco, Spain. The roundtable discussion is a discussion between all of us. Um, I would like to uh, give us um, a, a little idea of um, what is next in the World Naturopathic Federation and especially also um, corresponding to the European region, and that is educational standards. So it is great. We have schools here. Um, as I have in, been informed, Friede is also, Friede Aas is also um, collected with the school in Norwegian, yes. mm -hmm. in Norway. Yes. Um, that's great. Erika is also very active in a school and programs, Mariana and Sylvia, um, Marianne as well. And um, Iva Lloyd and myself, we are also the chairs of the Educational Committee of the World Naturopathic Federation. We have had in the last European um, support group meeting a um, proposal to uh, form an alliance of European recognized naturopathic schools. Um, we would like to have an exchange of teachers in the European region. We would like to work on curricula and um, support each other to um, get common standards in Europe to um, increase our educational standards. And I would like to hear the um, outlook, the opinion of all of you here on this initiative and how we can uh, bring advances to the table in the European region. So who would like to start? Please feel free. If, if I can just add, thank you, Tina. Thank you for that wonderful introduction um, as to what is going on and, and what and, um, plans the WNAP has. Um, the one thing I would just um, like to add is that um, the idea of an alliance is something that we have in North America, uh, we have in India, and we have in the Western Pacific. And one of the things that I think the WNF can um, provide is there are people from those alliances that have offered to help with 
this alliance. And and if I I come from Canada, before I started as a naturopathic um, doctor in Canada, um, they didn't have we ours the, our alliance is called the American Association of Naturopathic Medical Colleges, ANMC. And I could see how all of the schools in North America were able to transform in a very short um, period of time because they all used each other's strengths and they worked together very collaboratively so that the um, money that people have, because there's never, there's, I don't think any school has excess money and is saying, we don't know what to do with all of our money, right? So, <laughs> so the money yeah. could be spent on instructors versus on programs. So the one thing that I see that has happened in the alliances that are there is that the alliances has made the infrastructure much more easy and straightforward for people so that they can focus on the personnel and they can focus on that. We actually have even more opportunities now when Tina had mentioned about um, the ability to exchange instructors we now have the ability both ways of having instructors share. Like I have, I have um, had an opportunity to um, do a course in um, a short course in, in one of the schools in Australia. So we have to look more globally at the profession and recognize those opportunities. And the one thing the WNF is trying to do is to identify the strengths and the challenges of different places, but in Europe, there's a lot of strengths. So yes, we need to work on the educational standards, but we also want to capture the strengths. And we want to recognize that is something that we can bring in to the other schools as well. So it is an exchange of ideas. And, but that's the whole thing. The Alliance is a fabulous idea. And I just, and we will work with the European schools as much as we can um, to help link you with other people who are instrumental in the other alliances and see what resources can be shared. Okay. Thank you, Tina. that's great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, Tina, uh, at the end of the, the strong European Congress, um, I think um, the Europe get uh, stronger with the connection, naturopathic connection. We have uh, a school in Slovenia, naturopathic school, seven years, but it's difficult to start um, without support. We start without support Spain and without support the World Naturopathic Federation for, um, with the uh, good teacher and because in 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 the, in the region, when do you don't have uh, naturopath? It's difficult to start with naturopathy with good naturopathy, uh, with and and um, um, and um, start with good uh, naturopathy and good profession. And this is basis naturopathy uh, is start in Europe and then uh, uh, must connect it in Europe to put strong Europe together. You know, Eric, one of the things that I just want to highlight from what I know that you have done with your Slovenian school is that you have always brought in other instructors. You've always um, done that. And I think that is really when we look at the naturopathic schools that um, excel, and it is because they recognize that when you're first starting, it's almost impossible to have all the strengths inside, right? And I, I commend you on that um, awareness and that commitment to bringing in experts when for the areas that you need it. And I think that's why you have been able to grow so Slovenia as, as strongly and as consistently as you have is because of that. So that's, you've done well, you've done well. We are in process in the European region on exchanging information on teachers, the availability, the language of the teachers. We call it our Erasmus Teachers um, Initiative in Europe. 
and we are starting to uh, create the curricula of the teachers so the schools can look at that list and choose teachers um, according to their need. Yes, and now um, next year we start with naturopathic school uh, in Slovenia with a community clinic and offer the student offer for free naturopathic visit of, of the people in Slovenia and uh, they have um, a tutor uh, um, um, after the, the, the visit and this is good modality is uh, the, the, the practice is in pharmacy and is good modality to offer um, uh, help to people community clinic and um, the, the student have possible to practice and this is very important because in in, in Europe is is different is not um, America is different for for practice uh, for the privacy and uh, uh, and this is one good modality and um, is very um, uh, the, the people um, 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 uh, they uh, love this uh, community clinic. We offer 200 uh, uh, free uh, visit a year. This is something that we also in Italy as uh, Instituto NEMI, we, we did the same. So we are able to offer our students um, a way to practice together with the uh, older and more experienced uh, nat naturopathic, naturopathic practitioner and at the same time to offer a service to the community because uh, naturopathic practitioners are educator in, 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 in first. So we think that it is um, extremely important to reach out for the people and to... Um, uh, let them also understand what naturopathic practitioner can do for their health before, <laughs> before the disease it comes, you know, the health. So uh, this is something that we also do. And we are really, really excited and very proud to be part of the WNF and really excited about the <laughs> Erasmus teacher program because we think that the strength is in the uh, sharing sharing knowledge, sharing ideas, sharing points of views. And uh, so this is something that we are really happy to, to be part of. And I could, I'd just like to add to that, uh, I agree totally, that the UN Human Rights and the WHO guidelines, um, they, they monitor the mental health services and they said they need to include the viewpoints of service users, that would be people attending the clinic. So uh, our actual program was founded to provide uh, naturopathy, integrated naturopathy for um, broken mothers and women impacted by violence and children the burden of um, strength for the families and the community. And um, we're providing a, a forensic training program for this, working with all, all the different countries. So we, well, that, that would be our contribution. Nice, Maria. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's fabulous, yeah. And I think it's completely at the impulse of the time um, of health promotion, of providing community health. That is also topic of our European Congress um, we have so many um, things to contribute in treatments, in um, lifestyle um, advices, environmental health um, information, and uh, the WNF is doing a lot of campaigns in that direction that Europe can use everything of that, the, all the resource, resources done. We... Um, we use widely in the European region as well, and that's uh, that's bringing us very much ahead. Mm. 
you know, one of the one of the focuses. So the WNF has um, a few main focuses right now. So the health technology assessment will be published within the next few months. So this is very exciting, and and um, uh, it's been I think five years coming together. So it's been about a year and a half of pretty much just writing. So we're really excited about this, and and I think that will help. Um, but the other thing that we're doing is the environmental um, risk factors initiative and the um, social media campaign around that. And, and we have the two animated videos that are translated into, I think, five languages, looking at, you know, the shield of wellness and looking at environmental pollutants. And, and one of the things that we do want to do in the WNF is to, to, what, to the degree that we can is to provide resources for people to be able to um, educate the community. And if we look at where we expect or where we hope the WNF becomes much better known for um, is in its work in educating the community. So we have the community clinics, which are essential, and we want to do a lot more work for that. Our next fundraising campaign will be around community clinics. So just I'll give you guys a little heads up right now. It would be good to create small videos and send them to us. Um, so we want to, that'll be the next um, fundraising will be around um, supporting um, community clinics around the world. Um, but it's also about getting naturopathic practitioners recognized in the role they play in educating the community through things that don't cost anything, through seminars, through blogs, through um, the, the marketing that we do. And and what, what we have found with a lot of the work we've done for the WNF is the naturopathic community does some tremendous work that we don't tell anybody about other than the patients that get it. And we have to be much better at promoting our strengths. And one of the things that is a gem that I have found um, is the community clinics and how they reach um, the underprivileged and um, um, women and natives and um, LGBTQ and all of these, uh, right, special groups, right? So we have elderly, we have all of these. And that is, a lot of those groups are out there. So a lot of the community clinics um, that I'm aware of, for example, they didn't start on their own. What they did is naturopaths um, went into community clinics that were already developed for a certain group, right? And that's what we want to do is to help bridge some of that. And, and one of the things, for example, that I know that they have done in North America is that they work with some of the suppliers to say, maybe this is how you can support us is in providing products for these community clinics. So there's lots of things that we can mm -hmm. do, but it is, I guess for me, the main thing is, is that this is a very exciting time for the profession. And we need to, um, you know, the wave is definitely towards natural medicine, towards naturopathic medicine, and we need to ride it. And, you know, and, and there's that whole balance between do the infrastructure and, you know, make sure that you are promoting the work that, that, that you're doing, because there is, like Tina said, you know, half of the naturopathic practitioners around the world are in Europe. And, you know, there is so much history there, there's so much resources. And we just need to um, uh, work a little bit more in promoting that. So we, so that even within our own profession, we recognize the strengths that that um, other people have. Yeah. And once we have achieved the common standards and moving um, closer together in in our benchmarks of education and professional formation, then we can go forward, especially with the countries that are self-governance, like right now in Europe, um, and propose the uh, mutual recognition of educational standards in Europe with the European uh, Union. There are laws that are made for professions um, we all seek for a regulation as a health profession. We have in Europe the Bologna standards. We have in Europe the Copenhagen standards. They are health science professions 
with at least 240 credits as a graduate in naturopathy or graduate in pharmacy or graduate in physiotherapy. So we want to um, go to that level. And uh, once we have done our homework on a national basis, we can move all together to the European um, Commission and propose the mutual recognition. And the European Commission does not exclude non-EU countries in that part. When it comes to professional recognition in the European countries, it is the um, geographical Europe not the European Union of the Economics. So um, United Kingdom will be on track, um, Norway will be on track. So we will have all countries then on track that can um, then exchange officially their professionals in Europe. It is, it is so important because we live so close together and we move uh, 200 kilometers and we can't work because our education, I have, had that on my own history, I moved to Spain. So I had, well, I moved from a country that is regulated to a country that is self-regulated. So it was not that difficult to get a homologation in Spain, but the other way around is impossible. You can't work in Germany without being a high practitioner, for example. And this is in Europe, in our um, global times, something that we want to change. So, um, yeah. Okay, so fabulous. Um, we had a great Congress. Um, the uh, advances in the profession, we have seen great presentations from um, over 10 countries, from uh, 12 uh, presenters. And um, thank you very much all to the participation to the Congress equally as a presenter and um, also as a listener and as a naturopathic practitioner, as a naturopathic interested person. We have that Congress sent out virtually. It will be staying on the website of the Congress, European Congress for the next couple of months. So people can download the presentations in video or in PDF um, the speakers uh, have um, nice or have were so kind to provide their presentations and that they can stay to uh, download for free. Um, our main objective is inform and exchange knowledge. Our main objective is really to promote naturopathic. Um, uh, naturopathic topics and health. So this is something that we really want to do in uh, Europe and as I see all over the world in other regions that is happening as well. So thank you very much, all of you. And um, hopefully we see us soon in person. Uh, we all uh, have a very, very big wish, I think, to uh, meet uh, face to face. And I think this will come soon. Have a great uh, day, have a great uh, um, uh, evening and see you soon. Bye bye. Thanks everybody. Thank bye bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.